Hey everybody, and welcome to another Interstellar Mother. Well, in this video, we're headed back to the Space 1999 universe as I construct this resin kit of the Amphicat from Moonbase Alpha. Alright, well this is a 112 scale model of the Amphicat produced by Century Castings. And the Amphicat was a vehicle used on Moonbase Alpha to get people across the lunar surface. They would also take it down to planets so it could function both in space and in an atmosphere. And the studio prop that was used on the show was made from a vehicle called the Amphicat, uh, which was commercially available at the time. So let me go ahead and open up this kit and I'll show you what comes inside. Okay, well first we have the set of wheels. Uh, this uh, little buggy has a total of uh, six wheels and uh, they come in halves here that are numbered, so they are specific to each other. And uh, we've got the main body. And we've got some of the detailing here that goes into this main body. And this little box here contains the uh, joystick as well as the uh, axles for the tires and a couple other things for detailing. And uh, also some magnets there. And it comes with a lighting kit, uh, complete with a battery holder, uh, two LEDs and a resistor. And here we have the instruction booklet, which I have to say is very impressive. It's got nice colored pictures as well as detailed instructions. And then we have our decal sheet, which uh, has quite a few decals on it so that we can uh, detail our moon buggy. And one thing about garage kits and resin models is that the quality can vary. Uh, a lot of it depends on how the resin is processed. I don't know too much about that, but the one thing you want to avoid are surface bubbles and imperfections. And I have to say, the casting is very, very clean here. Uh, really impressed with it. The main body looks, looks excellent as well. And so does all the other detailing here. All right, so those are all the parts that come with the kit. I have to also add that I was really impressed with how everything was nicely packed. All right, well, it's time to get started. Uh, first step is always to wash the parts uh, before we prime them and getting the model ready for painting. All right, so let's go ahead and get the ball rolling here. All right, so we're ready to go here. All the pieces are primed. These are all pieces here that are going to be painted black. And these here are the ones that can be painted yellow. Uh, I decided on top of the gray filler primer to add to me as white primer. I just figured with a lighter base it'd be easier to cover that with the yellow. And we're going to be using Tester's Chrome Yellow. So let's go ahead and get started. <music> And here we now have all the pieces painted yellow. All right, so I'm in the process now of putting the tires together. They come in two halves. Uh, they're marked so that they match each other. And uh, what you want to do is you want to just rotate them around until you find the best match and you get the most even uh, configuration there. And uh, once you find that, I would suggest you just mark it. Uh, just take a marker and just mark across the tread there and that gives you just one more landmark to go by as you pull them apart and you're putting the glue on you just want to get them in the same orientation again. Alright, so I'm in the process now of uh, finishing up the wheels. You can see they're put together and painted. Uh, I'm now applying some weathering along the edges of the wheels uh, so you look a little bit worn like they've rolled onto the moon surface there. Um, you can see the difference now between those that are and those that aren't. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm applying Tamiya's weathering kit uh, just taking the applicator here and taking the white pigment and just uh, brushing it on just like this and it first goes on fairly heavy and then I take a towel and wipe some of it off so it's not quite as prominent. Uh, it does a pretty good job at uh, giving a dusted appearance here along the edges. Alright guys, I want to just take a second just to show you a little bit more about the detailing I'm applying to the tires. As you saw, I was using the Tamiya weathering kit to apply pigment along the edges. I did rub some of that off because it was looking a little too heavy. And uh, then uh, to apply uh, the pigment along the middle here, uh, I decided just to take the applicator and just gently glide in a circular motion until I got to the right amount of haze I was looking for. Remember, the ultimate goal here is to make the tire look dusty um, as it had been um, as if it had been running along the lunar surface there. Uh, so we want a nice even weathered pattern. Um, to address the middle I'm just taking some uh, light gray pastels and applying it along the center there. And uh, I did try applying just to see what happened again with a light dusting of the uh, tester's dull coat and it seemed to not affect it too much. Um, if it did uh, lighten up the weathering I just went back and applied a little bit more. All 
right, so next we're going to work on the decals. I had planned on doing some stuff with the lighting, but I need to get a hold of some 9-volt battery connectors. I'm not going to use the one that came with the kit. I'm going to do something a little different. I'll let you in on those plans shortly. But uh, first we're going to go ahead and apply decals, all of which go on this top portion. Again, this is the decal sheet. And the instructions are pretty self-explanatory on where they all go. So let's go ahead and get started. So you've noticed now, when it comes to these areas here, they're indented. Uh, we have to cut out the center of the decal. So just make sure you're using a very sharp X-Acto knife. And uh, so we're going to now go ahead and apply these here. And again, I'm just going to cut around. We don't have to cut quite as close to the edge, because we have a little bit more room here to work with. So I'm going to go just a little further from the edge here. And uh, after you put these decals um, in the water, they don't take very long to come off of the decal sheet. So, all right, when you're sliding these on, just be very careful. Centered, you want to take some of the water out and then just use a cotton swab to do that. Again, we may have to readjust the placement. And just do a little by little. And there we go. Now, one thing I've noticed is these decals are delicate. So as you are working with them, you may end up um, damaging them a little bit, at least I did anyway, but uh, it's repairable by just taking a very fine tip Sharpie and filling it in. So for example, there's a tiny little gap here because some of the uh, ink had rubbed away. So I just filled it in, just dabbing a little bit of, a, of this uh, marker there to fill in the line. For the striping on the sides here, I'm leaving them attached like this and just sliding them into place. And for these side stripes, I'm going to just take one of these long ones and cut it out, but divide it in half. So the tricky thing here is that they have to curve a little bit, so just make sure you're positioning it low enough so that they can curve around this area here. Just kind of gently press it down. All right, here we now have the finished decals. Um, these were easier to work with than I thought they'd be. Uh, you know, they are fairly thin decals, so they do conform to the surface pretty easily. You just roll your finger along the edge here just to get them to roll along that, that curved surface, and they will stick. All right, so I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll apply a clear coating. All right, so before I move into the lining, I just want to quickly show you the magnets that uh, come with the kit. The kit comes with six magnets. Uh, we're going to install them just as the instructions show, here, here, and here. And the adjoining magnets are going to go here, here, and here. So, of course, the magnets make it easy to separate the two halves so you can gain access to the battery. All right, well, it's time to install the lining, and the first thing was to install this switch. So I went ahead and drilled a hole large enough to accommodate the outer ring here of the switch. The switch will protrude here through the bottom, and that way we'll be able to turn on and off the lights without having to take off the top half. Uh, the wheels are fairly prominent, so they're going to hide the switch, so it should be hidden from view. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, glue it into place, and then we're going to use epoxy putty uh, to put over that to give it enough support, and that way when you press against it, it won't, won't pop out of place. All right, so basically what we're going to do is follow this diagram here. So we have two LEDs. Uh, one's going to be hooked to the resistor. The other one is going to go this way here, and uh, so I just took some tweezers and uh, bent the uh, connectors here just like that. And we're now going to go ahead and solder the resistor onto one side.
Okay, so now that the wires are in place, I'm feeding the tires through here. I decided to do that last. And uh, so I'm taking the axles and feeding them so that they're placed over the wires. So feeding the second one in now. And we're gonna place the other tire on the opposite side here. All right, here we go. And you can see where the switch is hidden here. Okay, and then this panel goes in here, like so. Then we have to glue the two joysticks into place. As you can see now, the wiring is all covered by the top piece. All right guys, so it's pretty much done. Uh, looks nice and tidy here. I put some epoxy putty here, again, just to add some support. And so I'm gonna let that dry. And then uh, I will show you then the final uh, completed model in just a second. All right, well here we have now the completed AmphiCat. Again, this model comes from Century Castings. Uh, they produce a number of different kits related to British sci-fi productions, uh, one of which, of course, is Space 1999. He offers a number of different kits related to that show. Uh, this, again, is the moon buggy scene on a TV show that's used to transport people across the lunar surface. This kit, again, is a 1 12th scale model of the AmphiCat, and it measures 7 inches from front to back. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty happy with the end result. The tires in particular, I was happy with the way the weathering turned out. Again, using that Tamiya weathering kit was very effective. Uh, the base here was created with uh, a plaque that I got from Michaels. And I just simply used some train ballast uh, and sprinkled it over after applying a layer of spray adhesive and then spray painting it with a uh, light gray color. The rocks were added from uh, an old aquarium rock that I have. Uh, in my drawer there. I used to have an aquarium. I just broke it up and uh, find it's helpful to have that. Every now and then when you're making a diorama, it's nice to have these odds and ends. But uh, getting back to the model here, the color used for the body was Tester's Chrome Yellow and then uh, just uh, flat black for the seats. And then I used a Tester's Chrome color for the handles here um, that you see on the joysticks. And again, look at the decals that are included with the uh, kit. Uh, this is the dashboard, of course. I can't say I'm an expert on what the AmphiCat is supposed to look like in regards to the dashboard, but, you know, they look pretty good here. Uh, decals overall were very uh, nice to work with. Uh, you know, they're not very thick, and I thought this was going to be a challenge to um, uh, install the striping that you see here, but uh, they are thin enough to be able to curve, as you saw uh, as I applied it, so really was not an issue at all. So as you know, the top half is detachable. Um, it's held in place by magnets. Now, the one thing that I did leave off was the adjoining magnet to this one. When I had it hooked up to the nose here, uh, it seemed to lift off the top half a bit too much for me. I thought the gap was a bit no too noticeable. Uh, the batteries right here, you can see underneath it is that epoxy putty that I have in place. Uh, I do have a push switch, so I wanted to make sure I had enough uh, stability uh, so that when you pushed against it, uh, you know, it's not gonna pop back into the model. Uh, so it hardens like plastic, and uh, it's really helpful to hold things in place there. Uh, lighting was pretty simple, just wiring it up just as the instructions had uh, told me to do, so that was not very complicated. Again, the only thing I did not do was uh, I didn't use the, um, the battery holder that comes with the model, which is a, a little black box with a, um, a flip switch there. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and make the switch accessible from underneath. So when it comes to rating this model, I'd give it a high rating of 4 all around. In terms of accuracy, it's a pretty accurate model, representation of the AmphiCat. Uh, ease of assembly, very simple kit to put together. Likeability, I really enjoyed putting it together, and I think you will too. Now in terms of pricing, uh, you know, a lot of these customized kits will run you a little bit more, but I have a special offer for you from Century Castings. So if you follow this link here, which I'll list below, uh, you'll get a special offer promotion pricing from Century Castings, which amounts about 10 bucks off the kit. So I encourage you to check it out. Any Space 1999 fan would love to have this kit in their collection. And again, Century Castings has a number of other items that you might find of interest, especially if you're a fan of British sci-fi. If you're a subscriber of my channel, you've seen that I've built a comlock and a laser prop from Space 1999, and those were from Century Castings too. So check them out at centurycastings.co.uk. All right, so that pretty much does it for this build. It was a pretty quick project, very straightforward to put together. If you are a Space 1999 fan, I'd highly recommend this kit. It's really a great addition to have to your collection. So as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at indestrothermodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. I always appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.